cityofflint.com. Did everyone receive the handout, the one that says it's a matter of finances? On the back side of that handout is contact information for the emergency manager. There's also some answers to some frequently asked questions. And you can always uh, send the emergency manager snail mail if you like. Our address is 1101 South Saginaw Street, City of Flint 48502 is our zip code. The telephone number is 810-766-7346. And if you signed up tonight and left your email address, we will put your email address into a database and as information becomes available, such as council, meetings with council, community meetings, you can get an email alerting you of those activities. So if you need something, you can give me a call. My number is 810-237-2039. And my email address is D as in Dawn, F as in Frank, Jones at cityofflint.com. And we're making all efforts to make this a transparent uh, process and providing information to the community that you request and that you desire. And we're doing it through a number of methods, which is our website and the blog as well, which is flintem.blogspot.com. And all of that information is on that one page handout. Thank you. Thanks. And so we'll open it up for questions now. And one thing I would just say is uh, my administrative team is here. And if you ask a question on a specific thing that I can't give a full answer to, I may turn to one of them and ask them to come up. I don't know if it's a water issue or something like that. I may ask Howard to come up. Uh, Chief's here for public safety questions. If, I don't think I can answer them. So, and, and I certainly don't have all the answers. I'll tell you one story. My, my youngest son, I raised five kids in this community. My youngest son who lives in Denver now was home for Christmas and uh, he got together with a lot of his friends who graduated from Flint Central and uh, one of them who was living in Atlanta now was home and he said, yeah, you really know your city's in trouble when you come home and your soccer coach is running the city. You know? <laughs> so, but anyway, gotta, we got to laugh a little bit through this too, right? Keep a little humor. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. Chris, are you going to call people up? Yeah, Chris. If you have a question, would you please come down? You have a microphone. Hopefully, it does work. So everyone can hear the question. Yeah, the podium down. There we go. Any one of the questions, come up, please come down here. Actually, that's one of the areas that has been in deficit, uh, but uh, what I would say is we haven't made any decisions, but what I said from the beginning is everything is on the table. I think we have to assess what the best way to move forward is, you know, not only in water, but in a lot of services that the city delivers. And in all cases, it might not be privatization. It could be cooperation with other units of government. So we're just gonna look at the options and then make the best decision in terms of efficiency and effectiveness for delivery of service. I'm curious, I went to the uh, manager and um, I didn't see the names and salaries of the people that you hired to help you. And I'm curious as to what the net gain financially is between those that you laid off and those that you hired. Good, good, great question. Uh, don't tie me to the exact to the dollar amount, but it's around $600,000 in net savings. Uh, one of the things I've done is where I could get loaned folks in to help. Uh, I've asked uh, organizations to consider loaning folks down uh, where I could hire somebody. I, I believe this is true. A anybody I've hired is not getting any benefits, okay? It's, a, it's an hourly rate of pay, but no benefits. 
and uh, with that, with the team I put in place, like I say, it's about net savings of about six hundred thousand dollars. Thank you. My name is Chris Dumroni. I live in Flint, Michigan. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate the fact that the public could come and address you. I, I think it might even be required that you hold know, these types of meetings, but. Unfortunately, these meetings for the public input have come after you presented your plan to the state. So, I, you, know, you know, the show is coming after the fact. Uh, your advisory committee, uh, I'll point out, I'm sure you know, and the public sh should need to know, must know, that, you know, you were part of the chamber here in Flint, Michigan, the Tennessee County Regional Chamber of Commerce. You've appointed one member on your five-person member advisory committee who is the president of the Genesee County Regional Chamber. Over the years, our city has given $125,000 to the Genesee County Regional Chamber of Commerce the last two years. Some years, a quarter of a million dollars, and maybe even more in other years. And I, I, I find it difficult to believe that these minds will come to the table and be unbiased. Uh, some of the members on your advisory committee have taken trips paid for by the Genesee County Regional Chamber of Commerce, and, and I have a, a, a great concern over that. My larger concern is over the pipeline, the Cary Downing Water Pipeline. We as a community are having a hard time paying the water bills now, which on average, is more than the property taxes we pay for the average home here in Flint, Michigan. To tap in with Kerry Gandhi, it'll cost $170 million to this community. Just for Flint, the entire project would cost much more than that. And uh, part of that problem is making a commitment as to how much water we'll buy. We have no idea of future business needs, of conservation. Uh, the out county area, they do not have mandatory tap-in fees to this pipeline. Where in the city of Flint, we are locked in. We cannot put a well in our backyards. So if you could address some of those, the, the public comment coming after your plan has been introduced. Let me, let me take that one first, Chris, and I'll try to get, let's get through about four of these because we do have a line of people Thank here. You. But on the public comment, here, here's what I would say about that is, I didn't have to create those advisory committees I had to create one five-member committee. Actually, it only had to be three. I made it a five-member committee. But I had 50 citizens involved in the process to uh, help put the plan together. And I've been in government uh, for 30 years around here. I've been in the nonprofit sector in government. And I would say uh, with proposals, with projects, with things that we've sent to state or federal government, when you have 50 citizens involved, that matches anything I've seen in, in, that I've been involved in in government. So again, nothing's perfect, but I did try to reach out to make sure we had citizen involvement in the process before we submitted the plan. So that's that one. On the chamber, uh, the, I, w I was on board at the chamber for about eight weeks back in 08, okay. And then uh, as luck would have it or not, I became temporary mayor. And then I went to work for Pre Pacific Fest Foundation in uh, Lansing, and we created this Flint Area Reinvestment Office. So uh, the, the thing I would say about the chamber when I mentioned the 2,000 jobs, the chamber is the entity in our county that is focusing on economic development. And you know, while our uh, allotment or allocation to them has been significant in the past. You mentioned it might have been as high as $250,000. I think it's down around 45,000 now. So it has gone down, but their work is really helping improving the job situation in this community. So I don't apologize for working with the chamber. The other thing is, is in my contract, I had to have a member of the business community. And Tim Herman representing the chamber, you know, with all the businesses, uh, not only throughout Flint, but throughout the county that are involved in the chamber, 
I just thought he was a, a, a good business representative because of the membership of the chamber. Let me get to the uh, Karagandhi, which would be the fourth one, okay? And uh, what I could say with that is we have not made a decision on Karagandhi. We are assessing that. Um, and uh, what I would say, even going back to when I was uh, temporary mayor, is that project, I think, is a great project for our region. It's a great project for the county. I think it will bring, uh, for the first time in a long time, probably 40 years, uh, water back into this community that we control. That you know, and I, I, I'm, I expect there will be questions tonight about people's water bills, and uh, and I'm not pointing a finger at Detroit. I, I'll, I'll say that right off the top. But what I will say is that our water that we're purchasing from Detroit has continued to rise the cost of that. There's a lot of leakage with that, even before it gets to us. And the citizens of Flint pay 20% of the cost and only use 10% of the water in the Detroit system, okay? Now that was something set up long before I got here. So for us to look at control of our own water, how we pay for that in the future, and when we look at job creation in our region, you know, to me, one of the things that's gonna bring Michigan back is water. It's really the oil in the 21st century. It's just as vital. So should we try to set up in our community where we control that cost and have that water available for businesses as they want to come into this community? I think it's critical that we do it. Now. The devil's always in the details, and that's what we have to do is really assess how do we position the city of Flint in the best way possible to either support the Karakandi project or do something differently. I can get into more detail on that as we go forward uh, with other meetings too, and I will. What I would say is that we will, we have not made any decision to privatize water. Uh, we are looking at all the options if I got into putting everything on the ballot that we made, need to make decisions on, we would get nowhere and we don't have much time. So uh, what I can tell you is I will talk about this publicly. Uh, I'll communicate through TV, radio, newspaper, and meetings like this to let you know just the kinds of questions we're asking, the answers to those, and then I'll put it before the public and make the best decision I can. Thanks. I'm worried about the vandalism uh, on uh, foreclosed homes. You know, uh, what, is there a program or is there something that I don't know about as a citizen pertaining to all these foreclosed houses and uh, these scrap yards, you know, Taking this stuff in, is there something going to be done about it? Well, uh, again, you're raising a key public safety issue in the community. I think um, uh, I've asked Chief Locke to put together a plan in working with the state police to improve our public safety presence in the community. Uh, it's all the more reason that we need to get a hold, get a, a hold of our finances properly because. We cannot hire the number of police officers we need, but I do think this has to be part of a whole plan. I can't solve that problem overnight. I know it's an issue, uh, and it's a critical issue in the